from Notre Dame. Uh, he'll talk on something new about differentially closed fields in Gap 3 uh, Yeah, uh, thank you. So, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It, it's nice to be here. Uh, I think I should preface this talk by saying that I'm, first of all, a model theorist. So, I did a bit of effort in translating everything I do in, differentially, in differential language. I hope that I succeeded. Um, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is just the setup that I will use. Uh, so this is sort of model theoretic language. I will just work in a saturated differentially closed field of characteristic zero, which I will always denote k delta. Uh, so this means, first of all, that k delta is a differentially differentially differential field of characteristic zero, uh, differentially closed field, I can find solution of any set of equations that has solution somewhere in some other field. So it's just like an algebraically closed field. Uh, and saturated, um, <clears throat> right, so if I have a collection of Cauchy constructible subsets over a small field K, and every finite sub collection has an unempty intersection, then it has an unempty intersection in my big field K. Okay. So basically, it's like a way to find generic points in big K. That's the idea. Okay, and then I will always denote curly C the field of constants, uh, which is an algebraically closed field. Right, and yeah, it's the same as taking an algebraically closed field of large transcendence degree. That's basically the idea here. <clears throat> okay, so the property I'm interested in, uh, so for people who know model theoretic language, it's just being I'm internal just to the constant. So what's, the, what's so. the connection between small k and big k? Uh, so small k is oh, just like, it's just a field, it's a field, okay, so That I just use as parameters, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, right, and so, so the definition uh, comes from model theory, uh, so an irreducible delta variety is x is either trivial, if there's a variety that's defined over the constant, uh, just a normal variety, not differential variety, and they are irrationally equivalent. And the, the key point here is that potentially I need some extra parameters to define that now. Um, <clears throat> Where are the extra parameters? Um, anywhere, it doesn't really. Anywhere. Yeah, okay. could be anywhere. Although, okay, so in fact you can prove that they can be points in X. Yeah, but that's, that's a theorem. Um, okay, and so then there's another definition that I sort of include here for completeness. Uh, I'm not going to work with it that much. Uh, so we say that it's almost isotrivial. Um, right, so basically it's like the same definition but with some finite noise, right? So like, I think you can use the bar for this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Can this, this one is better? Right. Oh, okay. Okay, that's going to be a bit. Thanks. Sorry. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, Right, so instead of having a map, I have this sub-delta variety of x cross vc, and basically the idea is that if I take a point in vc here, I find this very many points that are in this sub variety here, and then again, this project finite <coughs> to one on x. Right, so it's the same idea, except I have some sort of finite noise around. So I don't really have a map. Uh, and so again, in model theory, it's just the difference between being in the definable closure and the algebraic closure. So that's... Um, <clears throat> okay, so basically that's what I'm going to be interested in today is isotriviality, and I'm going to sort of mostly be interested in how isotriviality varies sort of in families. Could you give some intuition 
why the word isotrivial is used here? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I copied it from a paper. So I thought it was sort of stand up, but I'm not sure if. Isn't that what you call it? Yeah, he seems to be sending. Yeah, he seems to be sending. He said to constant. Any algebraic geometry. OK. OK, so. Um, and uh, how about uh, uh, birational? Uh, uh, so, is there an example? Could you give an example uh, in which it's, uh, it appears explicitly that it's, uh, that it's, it's, it's actually, it's, so you do birational? Mm. Oh, you mean you need birational, yeah. not just? Um, let's see, I think if you look at. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have one on top of my head right now. Um, Do we have a uh, log differential equation on elliptic curve? Um, so they are in terms of the constant. I think it's, it's given by the group law. Mm -hmm. So that might be very rational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it's more of a feature mm -hmm. right, than, the, than, the, than the limitation. Right? Mm -hmm. It means you work generically, right, which is sort of. Because, okay, because I'm coming from model theory, I'm always working generically in this sort of situation. So, so the bi-rational means it's an isomorphism already, right? Is that correct or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Okay. But not everywhere, right? It's gen generically. Generically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. In, in terms of differential algebra, so by, what is uh, what is bi-rational for, for in differential algebra? So it's, it's given by a regular function. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you use coordinates, if you use coordinates. What's the meaning of rational functions? Uh, there is with, with derivatives. So, so yeah. You it's, allow derivatives. Yeah, yeah. You allow just, just, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, like fraction. Yeah, yeah. Function, that's, right. that's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And only generically and on different pieces, they might have different formulas. Mm -hmm. And and this is this this is not uh, you don't ask to be affine, so it's just any anything. That's right. Anything. Right. Although I guess I'm, I guess I'm working on yeah. the, in the affine case. Right. I should have said that, but yes, I am working on the affine case. Affine case. So, so but, but then you don't. Uh, then what's an example of of this? Of or by rational. So um, do you mean an example of this or an of, so he's, he says he was only working on affine. Uh, no, so there's two questions. Do you mean an example of a by rational map? Is essential. Is essential. essential in the affine case. To get isotrivial, I, th um, so, so I still, I still say the log, the log equation on the elliptic curve would give it to you. So, I mean, the elliptic curve is defined in projective in space, but when you look at the differential equation, it's just the D log map, and that that you can think of it as being defined in the affine space, and so then. You would have the, the group law, which might be given to you by rationally, and so you know once you fix the solution, everything is uh, so that that would be given an example. Of that. Okay. Okay. So I had some examples, but I don't think any of them needed. Oh yeah, I got, okay. A few properties first. Uh, <clears throat> right. So. Basically, this notion is preserved under a lot of things. Uh, you take a sub variety, it's preserved. Uh, it's preserved under product. It's preserved under image of dominant delta rational map. Uh, and almost isotriviality is also preserved under uh, finite to one image. Uh, finite to one pre image, sorry. Um, right. And yeah, I have a last remark here that says that basically if we're willing to pass to modify our variety a bit we can always sort of assume that it's isotrivial up to some finite to one dominant map uh, so that's why i'm mostly going to work with isotrivial varieties because they're just easier to work with in general so in parentheses you meant but might not be isotrivial yeah yeah might not okay yeah it could be might not be isotrivial yeah Okay, so some examples. Um, so I think the first one is sort of the, the most well-known one uh, with linear equations. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, right, so 
these these ones are always isotrivial, and this is just because they're finite dimensional vector spaces over the constants. Um, and so you just pick a basis, and then you can define your map like this. Uh, right, and so we did need extra parameters to define the map. Uh, and then an example that's not a linear equation is the Riccati equation. Um, so given by x prime is equal to alpha on x2 plus alpha 2x plus alpha 3. So this is isotrivial. And so sorry to interrupt again. And so yeah, this is, that's why I said, oh, this is the easiest example, uh, Alex did. So this is uh, given by the uh, cross ratio, right? So you do need, so the cross ratio is a sort of rational map, so you do need, so, sorry, so go ahead. No, I'm curious, what do you mean by the cross ratio? No, to show that the uh, Riccardi equation mm. is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh, isotrivial, the map itself you get, uh, I think it, yeah, maybe. Yes. Potentially. Okay. And uh, how, how do uh, like independent differential transcendental appear? Uh, I don't think it actually. So it doesn't really matter. I think if you if they're not independent, it will still be isotrivial. Pretty sure. But uh, it will matter for something else later. Okay. But yeah, you're right. It doesn't really. Okay. And so, just a remark that, uh, well, again, this, this question about where can we find these this extra parameters, so we can always find them in X, right? Uh, so this map witnessing is a triviality is always defined over a finite set of... Why, why is the all on the top, the domain and co-domain switched here? Uh, did I switch them? It's, yeah, you're right, I did switch them. Um, I mean, it's by rational, so I guess I... Yeah, of course. It's, yeah, okay. Because you write the inputs, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, right. okay. But you're right, I did switch them. Um, <clears throat> right, and I think, yeah, I think I got a bit confused. So is the inverse that yeah. <coughs> is defined over the B1s? Yeah, I mean, both the inverse and the, the other way around as well, right? It's, it's just the inverse, so you can always... Yeah. Uh, right, and so when we had linear differential equation, these were again the basis of the vector space. Okay, and so the reason why these are very nice is because they have what model theorists call binding group, and I guess in linear in differential algebra it's mostly called Calva groups. Uh, so if I have an isotrivial irreducible delta variety, then this group that I'm calling out of x over c, little a, um, so it's the permutation of the points in big K of x induced by automorphism of the big field K fixing a and the constant point-wise. Sort of a mouthful. Um, but the point is this is isomorphic to a delta algebraic group that is itself isotrivial and is defined over A. And we call that the binding group. Um, so like this is just the Galois group for Picard-Bechet field zero extensions. It's the same idea. It's just a bit more general, right? And that's sort of where the fundamental systems become important. Uh, is to prove this, we just sort of encode an element of this group by the way it moves this tuple. And we show that we can do that in big K, right? Using using uh, differential equations. Okay. So I have a few examples. So if we look back at two earlier examples, uh, so if we have a linear equation, then <clears throat> right, the binding group is just the differential Galois group of the picard Vestra extension that's associated to it. So this is sort of familiar. Uh, but for the Riccati equation, the binding group isn't, isn't linear anymore, it's just PSL2 of, of the constants. Um, so that's where, I like say, that's where I needed them to be differentially transcendental, is to have this size of morphism. Otherwise, it could sort of become smaller. Mm -hmm. yes. um, if you have a linear equation, which is of the Euler type, uh, so yeah. that when you change the uh, differential, I mean, the derivation, it becomes an equation over the constants. 
constant coefficients. Yeah. Constant co okay, right. constant coefficients. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it, it would be coefficients like, God, the oil time is X. Yeah. 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 Make a change. So, would you consider the the one with the the oil time equation I to do? I mean, because you change the derivation, do you consider that? And it's all they're all isentry, all, right. linear. all linear. They're all linear, yeah. even with non constant yeah. coefficients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The coefficients don't have to be constant right. uh, to yeah. get into the isentry though. Right. Oh, yeah. just because it's a fundamental system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't, need, you don't need the coefficients to right. be constant. No. Could you show that example again to Google? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, possible uh, to recite right. the slide and. Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. So the coefficients here, they can, yeah, they are in big K, right? They are not in the constants. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah because all, all I really care is that it's a C vector space and that doesn't depend on where the coefficients are. Right. Okay. Okay. So just sort of uh, an interesting remark that sort of will come back later. Uh, is that if x is isotrivial defined over A, if I consider more parameters in this, in this group, right? So not only I fix C and A, but I also fix this B that's, that contains A, then of course I get a subgroup of the binding group. Uh, and in particular, if I, if I do this with a fundamental system of solution, then the group becomes trivial. So, okay, it's not, it's an easy remark. Uh, it will just give us, give us something, an interesting point of view later in the talk. Okay, and so now what I'm really going to be interested in in this talk is isotriviality in families. Uh, <clears throat> so what I call a family of isotrivial delta variety is just dominant delta rational map pi so from some variety z to some variety x, and each fiber is isotrivial, and both, both x and z are irreducible. Um, right, and so a classic <coughs> example is we take uh, the pullback of the constants under the logarithm derivative. So this is a family of isotrivial variety. Um, in fact, this, this would work for any, any variety, really, right? Uh, so again, if we put, take the pullback of any delta variety by the log derivative, then it will give us this sort of family. Um. <clears throat> okay, so one, one result that's, that I think is interesting about these uh, is that they also have some algebraic object associated to them, uh, but it's, it's a group, but not a group anymore. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I can define a group from this family of isotrivial delta variety. Uh, so the objects of my groupoid, sorry, is the set of generic points of X. And then for any A, B in X, uh, we just consider the bijections between the fibers as the set of morphism. So I think, I think a drawing might be nice for this. Uh, I'm a little lost in the plan. The, the, of what, of, uh, no, how this will go? Okay. Uh, so you, you defined uh, isotrivial. Yeah. Uh, you gave some examples, uh -huh. and you defined uh, for, okay. uh, you know binding group. So so what do you want to find out? So I'm going to basically I want to study how isotrivial varieties varies in family and like sort of like. What, can, what different behaviors can we see when we consider them very <coughs> for our basis? Mm -hmm. Right, so like the picture is that we have this base X and then we have these fibers over it. And so all these fibers are isotrivial and here I have A and B and then I have all these bijective maps between them that are induced by automorphism of K. And this is just a set of more. So that's the picture. And why would you want to study them in families? 
<clears throat> um, well, I think it comes naturally, right? If you have something that's isotrivial, you can say what happens if I make the parameter vary, right? And like, I mean, I think, okay, so. Or that like in the, um, the Gatti equation or the, 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 the... Um, yeah, I guess you could, you could study it from this point of view, yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't do it, but like, you know, you could look at, for example, uh, the pullback of the constants under the t log map, right? And so that's, that's a family of isotrigal variety that people have been interested in. Right? Could you write down what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so if I look at... So this is a family of isotrigal variety. Right? Because each fiber is isotrigal. Mm -hmm. That's all. And so you can be interested in, you know, like, how does these varieties vary when I make the parameter vary, right? That's, that's <clears throat> you, you, you still look dumb best. <laughs> so, 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 what is not known about this, and what is like? So, okay, one basic question that's not known. Uh -huh. is when does this family actually become isotrigal? That's, I mean, there's a lot of examples where we don't know if they are or not. I mean about this. Oh, about this one. Uh -huh. Oh, no, this one is, it's known, right? Yeah, this one is, we you know, yeah, it's just a basic example. Basic yeah. Example. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. But in general, I mean, there's a lot of things that I don't think people know. And t you mean, you mean just, uh, you have single gate. Right. Or what was it? Is equal to C, right? And C. Yeah, is in C. Yeah. Since, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is like the most basic example, but this one, of course, is well known. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, so, yeah, so, so you're asking a question when the whole thing is uh, isotrivial. Right, that could be one question. Right? I mean, there's a lot of other questions you could ask. Um, like, how does the, you know, how do the binding group vary together, right? Like things like that. So there's a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, so, so, so this, uh, so the map, mm -hmm. the map is given by. Uh, so it, by the map here. No, uh, the map into X. Yeah. Uh, it's just any, any map. I, I'm just asking that it has is also your fibers. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm just trying to see how a, a differential equation comes into the uh, no. So here is, no, you have a differential equation. X prime is equal to uh, a variable parameter right. times X. So in, in your example on the left. On the right, uh, you have differential equations uh, defining the map into X. Is that right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you, you want to study that differential equation. Mm -hmm. Is that, is, that, is that what's going So we first start with differential equation that has parameters in X, and then... Uh, you get yeah, think of a very, very different. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's, that's, that's the direction, that's the it, order in which it appears. So, as you would uh, look at it, uh, so I think it's taking a more general stance, just having an a, a isotropic family, and it doesn't, you don't really care how it's given to you. But, Yes, so like in different <laughs> It has to be given like that, right? It must be given like that, right? I just, I really just need a map. Right. And we have to is it map is differential algebraic, like it's rational, or what? What's it? It's, yeah. yeah, it's definable, yeah. so yeah. So it's given by differential right. equation. Right. Yeah. 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 It really looks very much like you're looking at a connection in differential geometry. Because you, you your, your fibers are your space and you're looking at maps between fibers mm -hmm. but your maps are induced by k which would not be the case in the right. fibers. but the very you're looking uh, i think a similar question would be you're looking for the <clears throat> whether the fiber whether the fiber bundle is trivial so you want to know something about curvature or or computing monogamy around singularities downstairs so there'd be some group acting on them. 
general knowledge. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know uh -huh. that very well, but I think that has been suggested to me by one other person. So yeah. maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah but well, the picture looks like what yeah, I'm right. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, maybe we can see if, if it actually is the same thing. <laughs> Let me continue. Um, right. Another question. Oh, sorry, sorry. When you talk about generic, uh, overall graph view and all. Right, so when I say generic, I always say uh, over the field that I use to define field, it. Field of definition? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If I, yeah, if I don't say anything, that's what I mean. Right. Um, okay, so the theorem uh, is that in that case, this groupoid is also. Uh, so it's not exactly, well, I would say definable, it's not exactly a delta variety, it's a generic set of a delta variety. Right? So it's described by differential polynomials, but only generic ones. Right? We don't really know what happens outside of generic ones. Um, yeah, and it's because really we need, we need to look at the generics of x to get like a nice behavior, like a nice uniform behavior on the fibers. So that's the reason why I need to limit myself to generics here. And could you uh, give an example of this, of, uh, no, in your, in your that example? Of, a, of the group you mean? Yes. That's, I think that's the next slide. So oh, okay. I think, I hope so. Uh, let's see, yes. Okay, uh, right, so in the, for by the log derivative of the constants, actually the group is not super interesting um, because in that case, there's no morphisms between the fibers. Uh, basically because if I fix the constants, I fix the base, and so I cannot move around. Um, so maybe a bit more interesting, um, if you look at x prime equals x for x, and we again take the pullback under the log derivative, then again, we have a family of isotrivial delta varieties, and then this group is actually connected. So there's always a morphism between two objects. Um, and we also have the, what they call the isotropy groups, right? So the group of the fibers are the multiplicative groups. So, so we have a bunch of multiplicative groups, and between them we have these morphisms given by the group of. Okay, and so, yeah, so I think the most basic question that you could ask about this is, when does this family of isotrigal varieties actually become isotrigal? Um, so of course, one immediate thing you could say is that X needs to be isotrigal itself, right? Because pi was this dominant map, so let's solve. So you're looking for sufficient conditions for isotriviality? Um, actually, uh, actually, we have an if and only condition. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, it's just that it's hard to check, but okay. it's an if and only if. Um, so, all right, so what else do we need? Um, so, one answer that, that, was, that Rahim Musa came up with um, that is sort of very direct. Um, so, we say that this family preserves isotriviality if when I take an isotrivial sub variety of of x, which passes through a generic point, then when I lift that by pi, it's again isotrivial. Um, okay, so this is sort of, um, yeah, very direct notion. Uh, pi equals of y, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, of y, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah of course, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so of course, it implies in particular that it's that all the fibers are, are as are trivial because I can just pick a generic point. Um, and of course, I can just, if x is as trivial, then I can just pick the whole x and, and then well done, right? So, right, so basically, this implies as triviality of, of z if x is as trivial. Can you, can you just think why do we one single generic one and not all its. Uh... Local? Uh, what do you mean? You, you consider generic point of X a non trivial, I mean, isotrivial variety? I mean, in the first point. Right. Just pull it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a take Y to be a generic point of X. 
Oh, yeah, okay. So in, I guess in the first bullet, I'm not assuming that x is isotrivial. I'm just saying x is some variety is okay. not, not. So like the only, you know, isotrivial varieties in x that I know are there for sure are points. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I understood your question perfectly, but then, actually. But then the, so th these are not points rational over... Um, no, but see, if I fix a point, I can just send it to a point in the constants, just like some random point, right? So like just a point is always isotrivial, basically. Is that why you need to put extra parameters? Because otherwise, what, why is it a variety? The, sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, it, as a variety, what, what is its field definition of why? When it's just a generic point of x? Um, it would be, have to be the. Uh, Given by the coordinates. I mean, if there is. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, it, it could have extra. It could need extra parameters for why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I understand your question. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. Why can need extra parameters? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That so that, that answers it then. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Sort of a weird example of something that preserves isotriviality. Uh, so if we consider this delta variety uh, given by x prime is equal to x cubed minus x squared, um, okay, so it has a model theoretic property called being orthogonal to c. Uh, so I don't really want to define it here, but uh, it implies that anything isotrivial in x is just a point. That's the only thing that we can have. Um, and so that means that if we take any delta rational map from Z to X with isotrivial fiber, it has to preserve, preserve isotriviality, right? Just because there's nothing isotrivial downstairs. Okay, so it's sort of funny, right? Because the fact that this variety is as far as possible from the constants sort of tells us something that it preserves isotriviality. So it's sort of unsatisfying, I find. Um, right, we would really like to say something about the whole fibers, not just about what happens downstairs. Um, okay. So that's why I sort of have another answer. Um, that we'll do the same thing when the base is isotrivial, but will be different otherwise. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is uniform isotriviality. Um, Right, so there's a nice diagram. Uh, so we have this irreducible delta variety uh, lambda, which is in x times v of c, and a birational map between z and this lambda. Uh, and of course, everything here is over some additional parameters. And yeah, it makes the diagram commute, commute. It just, I mean, it respects the fibers. Right, that's all. Um, Okay, so again, uh, if x is itself isotrivial, then v of c is in the constant, so basically it would imply that, that z is isotrivial. Okay, so again, in the, in the case where x is isotrivial, it just becomes a single notion. It's the same as preserving isotriviality in that case. Okay, um, right, so there's alternative ways to see this uh, that are probably easier to work with, at least for me. Um, <clears throat> right, so remember, uh, if we have something isotrivial, we have this birational map defined over some extra parameters. Um, and a family is uniformly isotrivial if basically I can pick the same parameters for every fiber. Right, so I have a set of parameters B, such that the delta by rational map witnessing isotriviality for any fiber is defined over B. Okay. And another way to think about this that is also, I think, really nice is that 
recall that each fiber will have a binding group. <coughs> and so what this first proposition is saying is really that we have a set of parameters B over which the binding groups all become trivial. Right? So we just kill all the binding groups by picking this B. Right. And so usually, uh, I guess the definition that's easier for computation is really this, this one. What, what is V sub A of C? Um, so it's the, right, so remember this pi minus one of A, the fiber is isotrivial. So it's delta by rational with this variety in C, in the constants. And so I just have an A here to say that this is for this one fiber. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the same for every fiber. Okay. And so if we go back to the weird example, we can see that there the two definitions are not the same. Um, <clears throat> so we've seen it preserves isotriviality, but it's not uniformly isotrivial because the fibers basically don't interact at all. Um, and the proof will again use that x is orthogonal to the constants. Um, so I can say a few words about the proof. Right, so it's like, I think it's sort of a classic technique or sort of direct. Uh, just assume it is. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Maybe I should just sort of draw this. I think it, with the fibers, it makes it easier to see. Um, right, so this is x, and I have some a in x. And I have some alpha in the fiber. And using the definition of uniform isotriviality, I can just find some polynomials over some field f such that alpha is a rational function of these two. Um, and then, well, and then you can just use. Um, okay, so this is this is where we use orthogonality on, of the fiber. When we look at the field, the differential field f of x with this derivation, we well, actually up to two x's. Sorry, oh. one is a one is a you know just a variable x in the oh, other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I thought the I, other one is yeah. x in the. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I got rid of these problems. Um, okay. Okay. I, I hope. Okay. Is is any of these very confusing? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, basically in, in, in f of the single variable x, uh, we have these equations, uh, and then you can just sort of just do it, right? You just compute that this just cannot happen in that field. Um, it takes some effort, but it's doable. Um, yeah, and uh, so, so we have two different behaviors for these uniform families. Uh, for these families of isotrivial varieties. Um, and so the question sort of is, you know, when are they different? When are they the same? Uh, so I think there's a lot of questions here that I don't know the answer to. Um, so in particular, there's this one thing uh, that Chadzirakis, Harrison, Treno, and Musa proved. Um, so if I take x, final, final dimensional irreducible delta variety, then the different, differential tangent bundle preserves isotriviality. Um, they actually proved it for even higher, like jet spaces, etc. but I'm just looking at the tangent bundle. And so you could ask, right, is, is it actually uniformly isotrivial? Um, right, so I just gave the equations of the differential tangent bundle here. Um, I don't think I'm actually going to use them, but um, okay. All right, so there's two cases where this this differential tangent model actually is uniformly isotrivial. Um, so there's two properties that that I'm going to use. Uh, the first one is that 
If A is in X, then delta alpha is always in the tangent bundle. And the second one is that taking the tangent bundle is a covariant functor on the category of delta varieties. Do you mind going back to the definition? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, maybe I can say a few words about these equations, but like, it's, I mean, it's really an, an adaptation of the, like, yeah, it's basically like, it's like the, and it's like the algebraic tangent bundle that you solve. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. And so from these two properties, so the first one gives us that if the tangent bundle is one dimensional, then this is uniformly isotrivial just because delta alpha will give us, give us a basis. Well, okay, if delta alpha is not zero, but if it is, we're in the constants and it doesn't matter. Um, right, so that's sort of easy to see. Uh, another one that's interesting is that if X is a delta group, then also it is uniformly isotrivial. Uh, maybe this one requires a, a bit more explanation, but I'm always drawing the same picture, but But basically, if I have two points AB and the fibers, I always have this map uh, by just multiplying by A minus 1B. And by functoriality, it will just go up to a map between the tangent bundles. And so, basically, if I know a basis uh, alpha 1, alpha, and for, for some fiber, then I can just move it around to basis in other phase. So that's, that's why this works. Um, right, so these are examples where it is uniformly isotrivial. Uh, so I haven't been able to find any example where it is not. Uh, but I still think that it should, most of the time, it should not be uniformly isotrivial because I think it's just really way too strong. Um, and I guess the problem in finding counterexample is that uh, when you go higher in dimensions, the computations, like the computation that I did like this, that just become like horrible. Like you just can't do them. Uh, and so basically, I think there's like a need for something a bit more conceptual here that I'm still trying to find out. OK. Um, I have a question. Uh, uh, it was not related to what you, know, what you had there before with the log uh, map. Uh, can you turn any differential equation, algebraic differential equation, with parameters into a family? Um, Constant parameters. A family of you know, one that you said. Um, I think so, yeah. yeah that, that sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. So how would you turn, for example, if you have x prime is equal to x hmm? plus a plus b. Uh, plus a. Right, so, well, I guess you have two different parameters. Yeah, so I guess you could, I mean, you need one of them to isolate the other, the other but. What does it mean? Like, I guess you couldn't get like a plus b already. So you, Asking x prime is equal to x plus b plus b. Right, so if you want to get b, you just look at x prime minus x minus a, right? And this is a map, right? So I just can call it pi, right? And then it will go from there to, to the parameter b. Mm -hmm. Ah, but, and then I want to get rid of all the parameters. Right, so. I mean, you could look at x prime minus x, and then you get a plus b, but I'm not sure you can get a and b separately. That's, that's what he meant. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't think you can separate them in one step. Uh -huh. Interesting. And you've had uh, a times b. Uh, it's the same, same problem. Same yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. But uh, a squared is okay. Yeah. Uh, and so 
sort of well, we, 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 we sort of a plus b for a, a squared. Is that okay? Well, I mean, up to some finite. <laughs> right, but. Okay. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so there's, again, uh, a collection of questions about this. Um, yeah, so the first one that I, that I think is interesting is, so the fact that this, this weird example is not uniformly isotrivial, it seems that it should be related to the fact that, again, x is orthogonal to the constants, um, which, again, I won't define, but says that x has nothing to do with the constants. Um, and so... Okay, one could hope for a general statement here. Uh, so, in fact, uh, Rémi Jaoui, which is a postdoc at Notre Dame, I think, has something along these lines. Uh, I have another question in regards to this. Yeah. Uh, what if you uh, do a canonical base? Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you always then include? Mm. Um. Well, but again, I think chemical base would be a plus b, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you will call it a c, and then you include into family. Yeah, yeah, but it's I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, but you can still cannot find a and b separately. Yeah, that's okay, but my question is like, if you do canonical base, can you by doing a canonical base, can you always turn any differential equation with parameters into a uh, family of your form? Yeah, I mean, they are over the canonical base, you can yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. You can over the canonical base, you can always do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And that's if and only if, right? You mean, if I can turn it into a family, then. Then uh, your parameters form. <laughs> Not necessarily. I'm not sure I understand the question. If you turn into a family, then your parameters form a canonical base. Mm. No, I don't see why. No, I don't think that's true. No. No. Um, <clears throat> right, so, okay, so the second question is maybe uh, more understandable by model theorists. Um, basically, what I have in mind here is analyzability over the constants for the second bullet, uh, for anyone that knows what that means. Um, but, yeah, basically, it's like I'm, I'm walking over this x, which is isotrivial, and I'm also assuming that pi from z to x has isotrivial fibers. And so the question is, is the differential tangen tangent model of such thing uniformly isotrivial? Um, and the reason why this is sort of interesting is because it's like the closest you can be to the constants without being isotrivial. So one would guess that maybe it works in that case. Um, Right, and the last question that I asked already is, can we give an example where it is not uniformly isotrivial? Um, yeah, and again, I think the computational methods sort of fail after a while for these things because it just becomes too complicated. Okay, um, so I think that's it for this part. Um, so I want to sort of switch for a while to something else. Um, okay. So splitting, uh, so delta variety x is said to be split over c if there are two isotrivial variety x1, x2, such that uh, x projects finite to 1 onto x1 and x2. Um, and of course, by all the properties we've seen uh, about isotriviality, we can see that if x is split over c, then it is almost isotrivial. And so again, um, we can ask the question, when does isotriviality imply splitting? Right? Like, is it always the case or not? Who knows? Um, 
Some people do know. Uh, okay, so, <clears throat> so recently, uh, Rahim Musa and his student, Rujang Jin, uh, they had this paper on the archive uh, giving the answer to, to that specific question that I had uh, in a very special case. Um, so if we have a delta variety x defined by x prime equals f of x, we assume it's isotrivial. And we ask, when is the pullback by the log derivative again isotrivial, and does it imply that it splits? Um, and so the interesting part is that it actually depends on the binding group downstairs. Uh, so there's three, four, four possibilities. Uh, I think I should actually have isomorphic on all the line. I shouldn't have equal on these first two. Um, but yeah, it is either isomorphic to the additive group, the multiple additive group, or this semi-direct product, or PSL2. Um, and so the resu result that they get, um, so in the first three cases, which were Again, when we have one of these three groups, then this is isotrivial, even only if it splits. Okay, so if it is isotrivial, it's for like very, very strong reason that it's just a product of two isotrivial things. Uh, but then there are counterexample where when the binding group of X is PSL2. Uh, so we have isotrivial delta varieties that do not, such that the pullback does not split, but is isotrivial. And it's actually the Ricassi equation, if I remember correctly. Um, right, so we have two different behaviors. Uh, and their proof is sort of, there's a lot of computations involved. Um, and <coughs> so Ryman High and I are sort of working on a shortcut for at least some of these cases, uh, which uses group OITs. OK, so sort of a dense slide. Um, right, but so if we go back to where we were at the start, uh, so if we take any family of isotrivial delta varieties defined over A, and we suppose that Z is isotrivial also. Okay, so that, that gives us a lot of binding groups. Uh, right, so we have the binding group of Z, the binding group of X, of the base, and of course we have the binding groups of the fibers, and then we can form this short exact sequence. Right? And everything here is isomorphic to an algebraic group. So it's sort of, well, back into in sort of algebraic world. Um, and the group H is also isotrivial. It's a subgroup of this big product of fibers here. Um, and remember, because we assumed uh, Right, we assume that Z is isotrivial, so actually it will be a, in a finite product, not just an infinite product, but a finite product. Okay. Um, and so then there's a criteria for splitting. Uh, I just need one more definition. Uh, so we say that some isotrivial variety X is fundamental if the map that witnesses isotriviality can be defined, defined over one point of x. Right, so we always had that it was defined on some finite collection. If it's just one, we say it's fundamental. Um, OK, and now, if we have a family of isotrivial delta variety, with z isotrivial, then if this splits and x is fundamental and the action is transitive, then, so yeah, yeah, then Z splits over C. So if we have all these conditions, then Z becomes a product. Okay, and so the proof, at least I mean my proof, it's, it's likely that you can prove that without groupoid, but the way I did was using the groupoid that I introduced earlier. Um, yeah, but it seems likely that you could maybe do without, um, potentially. Okay, uh, so once you have this, uh, you can go back to the to the situation they were in. Uh, <clears throat> so if the if the binding group downstairs uh, is G A or G M, then X is fundamental, and we can apply the proposition: the action is always transitive if X is not in C. 
Um, in the other two cases, uh, so in particular in the case of the semi-direct product by, of J by GM, well, you're not fundamental anymore, so you, you need to do some extra work to get it, to get it through. Um, and also, you know, that this is not split. So it sort of explains also why the last case didn't work is because we have something that's not split in that case. Um, right, but at least for the first two cases, we know, we know what to do. Um, so again, we're taking the inverse image under the log derivative. So the fiber, the binding over the fibers are the multiplicative group. And then uh, basically you see that any algebraic group extension uh, by some torus of, of GLGM is solvable affine algebraic, and you can show that all of these are split. And so basically this, plus the criteria that I showed earlier, gives us Jin and Musa's theorem in the first two cases without doing all the computations that they do. Um, and another, another nice thing about this, um, so in their paper, they ask about potential generalization, and, and the advantage here is that since we didn't do any computation, it's, it's a bit more general. Uh, so if we replace the logarithm derivative by the derivative, you can ask the same question. Uh, and this might generalize, although I'm not sure all the splitting will work for algebraic group in that case. Uh, I have to look at this. Because um, this time we will have to do extensions by a power of the additive group, basically, which is maybe not as well behaved. Um, OK, so I think that's it. Thank you for listening. And yeah, that's the papers I referred in the talk. That's okay. So. <coughs> One question. So yeah. how general, uh, so some of the results are, are your work in the differential algebra context or sort of more, more generally internality? Oh, um, yeah, everything is super general, I think. Yeah. Um, so did, did you have any particular result in mind? Or? No, no, so just yeah. in, in terms of, uh, so, so you don't, in what you read, you don't assume you in, in necessarily differentially closed field. That's, that's correct? Yeah. So what is the most general assumption you have? The most general assumption for for the group for the existence of the groupoid is just stability. So yeah, that's it. But you have to work with uh, with types, which yeah. is why I always have to have this generic around. Yeah. And so the second question: Have you looked at? Uh, so I know, for example, Ryan in his paper talks about uh, swords and derivative instead of. Uh, Mm. So these would provide nice yeah. examples. Have you looked at that yet? Or? No, yeah, I just thought about just the derivative, mm -hmm. not Schwarzschild yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I'm not sure it works in that case. I'm not sure how it actually behaves. Um, More questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.